Today on CityCast Portland, we're talking with Noah Rubin, a community organizer for the paddle boarding group SUP PDX. Noah has also been kayaking and paddling other vessels on the Willamette for over 13 years. She's here to share some tips for the best routes and how to stay safe out on the river. It's Thursday, August 3rd. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. Before we get into it, let's break down the essentials for paddling on the Willamette. Now, I know it depends if you're using a kayak, a canoe, maybe a, even a standing board, but what are some universal gear that you think most paddlers out in the Willamette would benefit from having? So first of all, a personal flotation device, a life vest is a must. Um, according to state law, you're supposed to have one on your vessel per person. Um, I myself, I, I stand up paddleboard, so I wear a vest. Um, it's a belted one. So if I fall in the water, I, there's like a little latch I can open mm -hmm. and then it um, opens up. But for kayaking and canoes, I believe you should be wearing a full vest. Right. Uh, the second thing would be a waterproof a bag to put your phone and your keys. Um, the other thing I always tell people is to tether everything to your vessel. So if you flip over, you don't want things uh, mm -hmm. floating everywhere. You don't want things sinking into the water. I've uh, once saved somebody who was trying to catch a bag that was drowning. <sighs> um, yeah, so I also suggest don't put anything on you like a backpack or anything that can cause you to drown, even if you have your vest on. Um, a third is always bring water. Mm -hmm. like even if you think you're going out for a little bit, just always bring water, always bring more water than you think you need. Um, you can end up paddling for a lot longer than you've planned. Snacks too, always. <laughs> Again, you never know. You never know. You might just want to like go on a longer ride and hang out and have a snack. <laughs> it's kind of obvious, but um, our sun is a lot stronger than we think it is. So always bring sunscreen, always wear sunscreen. Another suggestion for safety reasons is to also wear something that people can see. So bright colors. Um, and sorry, there's so much to bring. No, go on, go on. It's almost like the 10 essentials for, uh, for um, hiking. Um, mm -hmm. And another thing is if you're going later in the evening, have a light. You have to have a light on your vessel once it gets dark. Have a light just in case. Like a headlamp? Um, you, it's supposed to be a light that you can see all around, mm. 360. Oh. So you can actually buy one of those inflatable lights for camping. They cost about $15 to $20, mm -hmm. and those work great. Um, and also, again, I always tell people to bring a little jacket or some clothes in your dry bag just in case. You never know. You might get wet. You might get cold. Man, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I just have everything in a to-go bag, but in my garage ready to go. <laughs> oh, nice. You know, I've only kayaked on the Willamette a handful of times. One of the most dangerous parts for me was avoiding massive wakes and getting out of the way of barges because they are, they look like they're so slow. And then you look again and you're like, oh my God, they're right there. Um, do you have any safety tips for when you're out on the water? Like what are some do's and don'ts? I actually really like looking at the barges coming through and a lot of us paddlers that are more experienced enjoy catching the wakes that they, they give mm. actually. So we kind of use that to go faster. But um, I think the, the main rule of the road is if, if you're a slower vessel, you should stay on the sides of the river. So on the mm -hmm. banks of the river, do not paddle in the middle of the river. Use the middle of the river only to cross the river. Mm. If you see a barge or any other boat coming towards you, um, wait, just wait. You're not in a hurry to get anywhere. Um, and if you're racing, you probably know what you're doing, so it wouldn't be a problem. Um, and then if you see those wakes, angle your vessel into the wake. So you're going over it, not on the side of it. I think the main rule is to really not hang out in the middle of the river. Um, I see a lot of people sometimes just hanging out like just stopping in the middle of the river and checking it out. And I'm like, oh my God, like they don't realize nobody can see them. Um, especially if it's very sunny, the sun hits people in their eyes. They might not see what's going on in the middle of the river. So, and that's also why it's important to wear um, very visible clothes. I also just, did, I, I noticed, you know, you get a map of the river and the channel keeps changing. And when I say channel, it's like the channel where all the big boats go. And that's why I was like, is it just this? I mean, are they just going to stay in the center? Yeah. 
they're going to stay in the center. And usually the, um, the Portland spirit is one of the boats that always comes through and it's going to beep. It'll let people know that it's coming through. Mm Mm-hmm. That's cool. So it's not, they're not, the bigger boats are not really going to surprise you. Um, The jet boat though, that is one where you really have to be careful. (laughs) And honestly, if you've ever never been on a jet boat, those are really fun. The real big jet boats, the Willamette jet boats that have like 30 people in them. They're so fun, but they are sneaky. So that is one that I've been, I've fallen into the water because of them. It's just part of the game. You know, just get out of their way, let them go. I love a jet boat. Mm-hmm. It's a ritual that I go almost every year just because oh, I wow. I really love going that fast and I can't go that yeah. fast on my own. And I love like all the like Tokyo drifts on the on, mm-hmm. the, on the water. I was trying to explain this on the show, actually. I was like, and then you do like 360 spins and it's so ridiculous. And you get all wet and yeah. soaking wet. <laughs> it's fun. And then you're like learning actual things about the river, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's very educational. I've actually learned a lot. And uh, I I need to go back. It's just so expensive. (laughs) (laughs) So do you know, uh, we were talking about barges and stuff. Since you you are out on the river a lot more, do you happen to know if there's like a pattern, like if there's like busier days than most? Because I was out there Sunday and there was just, it was nonstop barges. And I was like, it's the Lord's Day. Go home. (laughs) You know, like, do you have any uh, suggestions for that? The weekends are very busy. Mm. Parking, people, everything. If you're really worried about jet about boats and about traffic, you just go early in the morning and go late in the evening. Uh, most people I know hit the water at 9 a.m. on a Sunday. They don't go in the afternoon. So honestly, I don't even know what it's like in the afternoon because I don't. <laughs> I, I just won't do that. But um, if, if you're trying to avoid that, it, that's how it is. The madhouse. You go early, go late. Are there any parts of the river that are quieter, like free of jet boats? Within the Sealy limits, I can say that not really. Mm-hmm. Um, the St. John's is a little quieter, but you do have the bigger boats coming through there. So you have the bigger barges. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. Um, so it's a little scarier in that way, but it's also kind of fun because the, it, it's a little bigger out there. So you can mm-hmm. avoid them. Um, Cedar Oaks boat ramp, which is down in... I think West Lynn um, is a little has a little cove area that's protected, but it's very small. So if you're a beginner and you want to just kind of test out, um, you can go out there as, as well as the Clackamette out in Oregon City, another little area that's closed off. But but those they're not much of a paddle. But if you're just trying to like get out and test the waters, those are good good little spots. George Rogers and Lake Oswego is another little spot. There's a lot of boat traffic there, but you can. You can kind of avoid it right? And, and, and practice. And there's a nice little beach over there as well. Do you have any other uh, safety do's and don'ts that we didn't cover? Uh, honestly, one of my, uh, my do's is don't be afraid to like fall into the water. Um, if you're a kayaker, practice falling in and getting back into a kayak because kayaks are really hard to get back into. Mm-hmm. If you're a paddleboarder, honestly, that is part of the fun is falling in. Um, don't be afraid of the river, like respect the river, like it's swimmable, even if it's dirty, just go shower after, uh, another big do is, um, check the weather, Mm. check wind conditions, check any other conditions that might affect you, your paddling. Um, if you're a paddleboarder, especially the wind, if it is windy and you still want to go out, paddle into the wind. So, um, when you come back, you'll come back faster. So if you want to turn back, it's not going to be an issue. If you're paddling with the wind and then you want to turn back against the wind, it's going to be really hard coming back and you want to make sure that coming back part is going to be easier. All right, well, let's take a quick break here. And when we return, let's get into some trip ideas for paddling on the Willamette. Well, now that people have a sense of what they should bring and um, how they should behave on the river, let's talk about some some paddling routes. Like, what's a good beginner route? I, I don't know if it would be the same for kayakers, canoers, and stand-up boarders, or if there's, like, different routes for each one. Um, okay, so I, I had mentioned George Rogers. Uh, George Rogers in Lake Oswego is a good spot to go in. Um, you, can, you can go in there and just take whatever route you want. There's a couple of islands 
either on either side. Like if you take a, a right, there's an island over there. And if you take a left, there's an island. And you could just go as far as you want to and come back. Um, there's a lot of like houses on the river that you could check out and wish that you had enough money to own. <laughs> <laughs> Another one, it's, I, I would say it's be beginner intermediate. It really depends on the conditions is the Ross Island Loop, which is our classic yeah. Portland paddle. You either go from Selwood uh, River Park or from Willamette Park in Portland, not Willamette Park in Westland. Um, and you just go around Ross Island. The backside of Ross Island actually is a no wake zone. Mm -hmm. So you can avoid some of those wakes, but there are a lot of uh, boats coming through this time of the year. Um, it's, it can be a little challenging if there's wind, but it, it, it's a really beautiful paddle, a classic Portland. You get to see the city. You can hang out at any point on the, on the island. So if you get tired, you could just chill on the island. You can always just go back. Um, but the whole loop itself will, will be about four, four and a half miles, depending if you go from Selwood or Willamette Park. And um, I, I think I've maybe looped it every week for the past 10 years. <laughs> More than once yeah. a week for the past 10 years. <laughs> it takes about like an hour or so? Or If you're paddling to work out, it should take you about an hour. If you're paddling casually, it can take two to three hours, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, before I purchased my kayak, I would always rent from the Willamette location. And I that I remember that's the loop we would always do, of course, because it's right yeah. there and it was super fun. So that's a good beginner route. Like, what about an mm -hmm. intermediate level? So have you heard of the Willamette Narrows? No. Oh, you have to go there. Okay, the Willamette Narrows are absolutely gorgeous. They're um, out in West Lynn, Ooh. another Willamette Park. Um, it is really hard to explain where you need to go. So just gra look at a map, like even Google Maps, and you can see where uh, you're going from there. But you're basically paddling around a bunch of uh, a group of little islands. Um, and it's just so beautiful there. It's very, very different. You, you go there and you're like, I can't believe I'm in Portland. And it's literally like 20 minutes from the city. Um, I just suggest Googling Willamette Narrows. <laughs> and you, you can figure out. I just out. did. And you can definitely find It's so great. So there's this wonderful, wonderful site called WillametteWaterTrail.org. Mm -hmm. yep. And it and it tells you pretty much like all the fun things you can do on the Willamette and uh, also does trip essentials and all this cool stuff. Um, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And uh, the Willamette Narrows... Um, I would definitely make sure I have water. It could mm -hmm. take a long time. You, you can stop and swim in some of the spots. Nice. And then another one, which I think is a hidden gem, um, and I don't know if you've been to, is Willamette Falls. Willamette have you Falls. you heard of that? Yeah, I've, I've, actually, I've actually been to it on the jet boat. <laughs> right. The jet boat does take you there. So Willamette Falls um, is in Oregon City. In order to get there, you can put in, um, I usually put in John Storm park, uh, which is under construction right now, but you can still put in there. You just can't park in the parking lot. Um, and it's about a mile paddle down. Um, there is a current going down there. So the mile actually turns into a, a much slower paddle than you would normally do. Uh, but once you get there, you basically see a waterfall in the river. It is just amazing. Um, it is. I, I, it's always breathtaking every time I go there because you just you forget about it, <laughs> and mm -hmm. then you go there and you're like, oh my god, this is so beautiful. You can't really go up to the waterfall because there is there are some crazy currents there. But some people who um, enjoy messing around in currents will will go in the current and mess around in it and figure out a way to get out there. Nice. Okay. Uh, what about for like what's a challenging route on the Willamette? So at this point, a challenging route is really like a long distance route. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite is to get a shuttle together. So get a few people together and basically put in by Willamette Falls or Selwood and paddle all the way to St. John's. So you could put in between 25 miles, 12 miles, um, basically see the entire city from the water, prepare for a full day of paddling, prepare for headwind, prepare for it to be hard. But it, it's pretty amazing, um, and, and and that's where I, that's what I would call challenging at this point. Everything else is is going to be the same conditions, just perhaps distance. Nice. Um, and to be honest, uh, Noah, my pitch was, hey guys, I, I bought a kayak 
and I've been out a couple times and I want to know more. What if we get an expert to come talk to me and tell me like some routes and what to do? So just know this was a really, you know, I'm, I'm hopefully helping others, but this was like a very um, a selfish uh, endeavor here. So thank you for, sure. for, you really are helping me a lot. I'm like, oh, this is all really good stuff. Um, is there anything else, uh, advice you would give to someone who is excited to explore the Willamette? Honestly, find friends, find people. It's so easy. Go on Facebook, go on meetup.com. I know it's cheesy to say that. Nobody like nobody likes Facebook anymore, but Facebook groups is really the, the spot to find people to do things with. And you'll be amazed at, at how much you, you'll end up pushing yourself because you'll find uh, new adventures to go on. And we only talked about the Willamette, but there is so much to do around here. And if you're a female identifying person, you can definitely find other females that are going if you feel uncomfortable or a little intimidating by going in a co-ed group. Um, you can just find your people and, and it's not that hard these days. And, and if you're shy, just push yourself a little bit <laughs> and get out there and, and meet people and, and it'll be pretty amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Noah. I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, maybe I'll see you out there. Yeah, for sure. What, what color is your kayak? <laughs> it is a beautiful, like, construction orange, you know, like cone. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. visible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Noah wanted us to mention that a waterway access permit is required in Oregon for any man-powered vessel 10 feet and over. And on top of wearing life jackets when you're out on the water paddling, it's also Oregon law for a boat less than 39 feet and four inches long to carry like a whistle or a compressed air horn. It's also really easy to attach a whistle to a life jacket. And now for your microdose of news. As the city sweeps camps downtown, neighbors of Southeast Portland's Spring Water Trail say that only means more urban camping ends up along that corridor. KGW reports that in the last six months, the city has cleared 65 campsites along that trail. And the far-right writer Andy No has fled Portland for England. He's suing two Portland activists for $900,000, alleging they incited an assault against him and inflicted emotional harm. Plus, the Oregonian will stop its print edition on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. That means Portland will no longer have a daily newspaper. The Oregonian will, of course, continue to publish daily news online. For even more local news and events, sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland. We'll throw a link in the show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Portland. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to support the show, share it with a friend, rate, or leave us a review. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's.